Today we're going to be speaking with Karen Gibson, MBE, an award-winning choir conductor who is a powerhouse of energy and inspiration. Known for her high quality work, Karen has been involved with vocal groups and choirs for over 25 years. She's been instrumental in drawing together and conducting some of the most prestigious large-scale choirs for a variety of gospel community and commercial initiatives, such as VE Day, the Queen's Jubilee, the Diana Concert, and recently the Royal Wedding. Karen was awarded an MBE for her services to music. Today, Karen leads Kingdom Choir, who are celebrating a 30-year milestone. Formed of individual singers and performers from in and around London, the Kingdom Choir is a group of like-minded artists dedicated to creating a sound that demonstrates the community they share. Over the years, the choir have earned widespread acclaim for its electrifying performances, transcendent harmonies, and unwavering commitment to spreading the message of hope, love, and unity through music. The Kingdom Choir is a sterling example of the unity within the British gospel community. And to give us an insight, we're delighted to welcome choir conductor of the Kingdom Choir, Karen Gibson, MBE. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Nice to meet you, Cyrus. God bless you, Karen. Thank you so much for joining us on Revelation TV. We're going to talk about the Kingdom Choir very soon, but I'd love to get an insight into your real life. Can you give us an insight into your childhood? <laughs> well, I grew up with my mum and my sister, my younger sister, who's also a choir conductor. And we grew up in a BMC church, uh, specifically the Church of God of Prophecy, where we had an informal education into gospel music. Uh, we also uh, played classical instruments, the piano, oboe, clarinet. Uh, and so we had these two worlds come together. And I guess that's why we do what we do now, because we just love music. Growing up, what did music mean to you at that time? Was it a very important part of your childhood? Yeah, I think music for me was, a, well, it's, it's, a, it's a, a form of expression, isn't it? But it was, it's also a really brilliant means of connection and community. And in the church that I went to, um, music was throughout the service, whether you were singing, whether you were playing on drums, on keyboards, whether you were in a choir. And uh, those were some wonderful memories I have of creating music and performing when I was a child with my sister, with my friends, and with the church choir at large. So yeah, very, very, very important part of my childhood. And that's not even including the music that I played outside of church, in school and other uh, venues. How important it was it for you to be involved in music and the church choir and part of the church community from a young age? Looking back now, do you think that was a vital part of the foundations of the person that you are today? I think my experiences with music inside the church are absolutely crucial to, I think, to who I am and what I do and how I express myself and what I see as a means of bringing people together giving them confidence, giving them self-esteem, uh, a, a means of uh, belonging to community, connection, presentation, so many things I see that music has done for me and that I've seen do for young people that I have taught who actually write me and tell me so. So I feel that music is a beautiful medium, beautiful medium for growth and development. Now, we're constantly trying to find ways of lifting people up, inspiring them, because there's so much hopelessness, hopelessness in this world today. Are there any particular obstacles that you experience in your own life that maybe you can just share with our viewers of how you overcame them, just to give some of our viewers some hope for today? I would say singing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, been, I've been in the church since I was five. That's many, many years ago. And the church community, um, really important, really gave me some great principles. But I wouldn't say that I always adhere to them or, or, or even always uh, believe them. But music kept me grounded. Music in the church gave me a reason to carry on and uh, really kind of has uh, solidified. It's, that's not the word, I can't think of the word, but it's really kind of kept my life on track that's really what helped me, being able to receive the blessing of music and to give it away. Very, very rewarding and very, very important. 
What is it about music of maybe when you're going through a difficult time in your life of hopelessness, you're not sure which way to turn, and all of a sudden you listen to music, but even more importantly, gospel music or worship music. It's such a creative way of us being able to reconnect ourselves with Jesus Christ. What is it about yeah. music that makes that happen for us, do you think? Well, I think music is a, an incredibly powerful um, force. It's a force. And uh, I have been teaching gospel music for many years, and I've been teaching it to all sorts of people. I've taught uh, Muslims and Buddhists and people of all persuasions. I've all, all even taught witches. Yeah. <laughs> and wow. the thing about music is that it kind of gets straight to the heart. But then when you are singing the themes of gospel music, such as love and joy and hope, and peace and comfort, then what you're doing is you are singing those words ostensibly to an audience, but you're also singing them to yourself. I think that words are powerful. So I think that everything you hear impacts you. So when you are singing those words, you are also hearing them. They're also going into your own ears, and I believe into your spirit. And I have had so many testimonials of what music has done for people, and particularly gospel music, what gospel music has done for people. So very, very powerful. It's such a wonderful, creative, evangelical tool as well, because it's non-threatening and you're able to reach out to people who may not necessarily walk into a church, but they're listening to music. And it's so interesting how you shared of people from other faiths, other backgrounds as well. So what sort yeah. of reception have you received from those kind of people from different backgrounds or, or non-believers, for example? Yeah, it's so, so positive. And I'm talking on all kinds of platforms. I'm talking about uh, from school children. I remember a young lady wrote me to tell me that um, singing in a gospel choir at school enabled her to uh, have the confidence to go for a law degree. She's now got two law degrees. I've had people tell me that singing gospel music about, you know, for one or two hours a week has, you know, just delivered them, if you like, they didn't use that language, but, you know, released them from uh, addiction, grief, uh, death in the family. I've had school teachers tell me that young kids who were attending gospel choir um, have, uh, you know, changed their behavior. And these are young people who are kind of going down the wrong path, but coming to gospel choir for once, uh, uh, one hour a week, uh, really did something and changed them. Can you give us an insight into Kingdom Choir, how it began, how did the name come about as well? Give us a little insight into Kingdom Choir. Okay, so I told you that I went to the Church of God of Prophecy as a child, and that church had a London-wide choir called the Kingdom Choir, actually was conducted by Noel Robinson, Robinson himself. And uh, he was a leader, and he got a job on um, BBC Radio 2, the gospel train and this gospel train went into various churches and recorded the service but the service would need a choir so Noel got me in to work with the choirs but I would bring in members of this London-wide Church of God of Prophecy choir to help with the singing after a while I was curating the choir apart from the churches and using lots of uh, my my peers from this London-wide choir and one day we got a call from Songs of Praise who said, oh, we've heard of your choir and uh, we like it. We'd love you to come and sing on our 35th birthday programme. I said, that would be lovely. And the producer said to me, so what's your name? And I said, oh, we haven't got a name <laughs> because we'd only been this, the host choir for the gospel train. So the producer said to me, well, you better get a name by tomorrow. <laughs> so um, I went to sleep that night, as you do, and I dreamt of the name The Kingdom Choir. And I didn't know what it meant. I didn't like it, but I couldn't, for the life of me, think of anything else. And so when she called back the next day, she said she would, um, and she asked me the question. I said, The Kingdom Choir? So that's how we got the name. And that's when we became a proper entity, The Kingdom Choir. 
That's amazing. What incredible stories, how God moves in such mysterious ways as well. So can you give yeah. us an insight? You're about to celebrate the 30 year milestone as well of the Kingdom Choir. Give us an insight. What's the last 30 years or how over the years, how have things developed? How has the Kingdom Choir grown and how are things changing of what you are today? Yeah, that's a really good question. So as you say, it's been going for 30 years and there've been lots of changes, lots of changes personally, lots of changes in the personnel. I would say um, back in the day, it was more people my age, but of course people move on. So a lot of the choir right now um, are half my age. <laughs> so uh, that, that's one difference. So they must We've be had... children then. If they're half your age, they must be kids. Yes, less. <laughs> <laughs> like that you'll go far <laughs> <laughs> they're actually big people with their own children so I, i'm oh. a little bit of a grandmother which i love as well so um yeah lots of uh, wonderful opportunities even before or you know uh, 2018 uh we'd sung by that time we'd sung for nelson mandela and bishop tutu President Clinton, we would sung for the Queen, as you've mentioned, and at the Princess Diana concert. We've done lots of lovely stuff. So wonderful experiences and memories together. Amazing. So can you give us an insight into how many members are there involved in the Kingdom Choir as well? How, how, and how does each person in the, in the Kingdom Choir play such a significant role? Yeah. That's a really good question as well. I would say, well, let me just answer the first question. There's about 40 people, around about 40 people in the wow. choir. We hardly ever go out at, at full, full numbers, but we have had the opportunity to do so a few times, which is lovely, mayhem, but lovely. Um, and everybody has their own part to play because even though we're singing as a, a conglomerate, conglomerate, if you like, or a co cohort, um, everybody's an individual and everybody brings their, their own self to the table. And so that's how we all pay, play a part. And, you know, there are several roles in the choir. You have the musicians, you have the conductor, you have the, the lead singer or singers, and you have the choir. And every role is specific and needs a specific behavior, if you like, or attention. So what have been some of the highlights for you personally? Obviously, you performed at the Royal Wedding. I'm sure that was probably part of the highlight as well as reaching millions of people all over the world with the wonderful gospel message. But for you, what have been the highlights from your perspective? Yes, that, that was definitely a highlight, um, singing at the wedding. Quite, quite surreal and very unexpected. But there's, there's also been more personable or personal moments, more intimate moments when we're you know, singing with children, doing a workshop, you know, where you can actually, you know, touch and feel people and get immediate responses. That's very beautiful. I love going on tour. That's very, very special for me, getting to see people who love the choir and want to sing with the choir, want to clap with the choir and dance. Seeing people come in one way, maybe a little bit shy, a little bit reserved, maybe not sure of what to expect and then leave the place making friends with the people around them even hugging them laughing with them uh, the joy is beautiful so I, I love tours and we've been on tour in the uk and to the us twice it's always marvelous marvelous time of ministry you said there's 40 of you in that choir tell us about is it like a family unit are you very all close together you're there for each other etc give us an insight i would say that the best choirs are always like family. Mm. And in family, you get all sorts. So we have times of great laughter and joy. There are times that, that are not so easy, times that are a little bit more tricky, but that's the nature of family. And the issue is not what happens, it's how you deal with it and it's how you come back with it. But the, the, main, the main thing for me about the Kingdom Choir is that when we're together, it's always a time of deep satisfaction, joy, reward, and love. After you've performed, you're saying you're also doing the workshops as well. Give us a further insight into maybe some people are even asking questions about God or Jesus Christ or anything like that about faith in any way. What are people's yeah. reactions after they hear your music and they're asking those kind of questions? What do, what do you say to them? Um, 
we tell them about our experience. Mm. We pray with, we've done that on tours where we like to do a meet and greet after we've sung. And it's really wonderful because we get to pray with all sorts of people, people who are ill, people who are questioning, people who um, have had a really hard time, people who are repentant. And so then we get to really share our faith. We share our faith from the stage, but also it's really good to be able to connect with people one-on-one. -on -one. And it's really great when they uh, want prayer, they allow us to pray with them. That's a very special time of ministry. That's absolutely beautiful. Now you're awarded an MBE as well for your services mm -hmm. to music. Tell us, what was that day like for you? That was a beautiful day, <laughs> <A> really <laughs> lovely day. Um, I was awarded my uh, <clears throat> medal, if you like, my award by uh, Princess Anne. And she said to me, I think we know each other. <laughs> I said, yes, we do, because we'd met previously. Um, obviously, uh, she'd seen us at the wedding and uh, it was a beautiful sunny day. And the work is not just what you see on, on TV. There's lots of work that goes on in the background and many, many years of teaching and pouring out, many years of encouraging, many years of hugging and loving and laughter uh, across the nature, and across the nation, across Europe and across the world. So it's wonderful to have that acknowledged. It's an honor. Can you give us an insight during the COVID times when we were experiencing lockdown? Uh, you were doing some vir virtual videos as well and doing lots of gatherings of people online. Why was it important for you at that time to be reaching out to people with your music and especially giving them some hope? You know, um, when COVID started, I was really um, marked by what I saw happening in Italy. It was the very, very beginning, and Italy were particularly impacted. And I saw how the people reacted. I saw how they came out onto their balconies in this time of bewilderment and confusion. And they just sung, sung for each other, sung with each other across the balconies, sung to each other, encouraging one another and lifting the spirits. And it taught me something that whilst we are apart, we can still sing. And we can still have connection. Nothing like being in the room for me, um, but we can still have connection. We can still see each other, hear the voice. And we're not, it means that we're not um, as isolated as that thing would have us believe. Very, very important. And so the choir would meet, we'd meet on our usual rehearsal night and we'd just be together. We, we did try to rehearse, but it was a spectacular failure. So we didn't continue with that, but we would, we would meet together. I do remember one time we, um, uh, we ate together. We all got our <laughs> delivery and we sat together on the screens and we ate together and talked and laughed, you know, connection that, that was, that was great for us. The question is, during the COVID yes. time as well, you were able to reach out to people because gospel music is such a wonderful tool as well. And it was changing people's mindsets, so helping them overcome depression and fear and everything else going on in the world, especially during that time. Were people interacting with you online? What sort of response were you receiving? Yeah, um, people had written <laughs> to us actually during that time and told us how our music had really helped them. Um, you know, we're talking about mental illness. We're talking about people who are actually at the end of their lives. Then our music is what they were listening to. Uh, we're talking about people who are expecting babies and will play our music to their babies. And really, um, it really helped them. I didn't expect it, but it's uh, such a privilege to be able to say that. So tell us about the Kingdom Choir. What are the plans for the future? What are you expecting? What I am expecting, what I would love is to make more music. I'd love to do more tours, and we're talking about that right now. Um, we'd love to, um, we've actually started a foundation, the Kingdom Choir Foundation. So we want to see that grow and thrive and develop some more. Tell us more about that foundation, because I assume you're trying to reach out maybe to the young people. Tell us more, what is it all about? Uh, exactly that, because many of the Kingdom Choir are teachers um, and we have seen the power of music 
in schools and other youth institutions. So we started this foundation as a means of outreach to young people. So we've just, we're coming close to the end of our pilot project and it's going beautifully. And we are being told about changes in behavior. And I am seeing the growth in, in confidence in these beautiful young people. So that's, that's it in a nutshell, just reaching young people through the power of music. What an amazing initiative because the youth of today, they're struggling with so many different things. They're on social media. I think they're under a lot of different pressures that maybe we had when we were growing up. So why do yeah. you think it's important that we can find ways of giving them some hope and reaching out to the young people of today? Uh, for exactly those reasons. I, I agree with you that, of course, when you're young, you're going through puberty, you have all sorts of struggles, but I think I feel like the young people have so much more to contend with. There's so much more distraction. There's so much more to live up to. And I think it's really hard for them. And I think um, in, a, you know, I don't want to be political, but in an environment where, uh, you know, music resources are being pulled from within schools and other institutions, I think music is a really important force to just see uh, young people just grow in their self-esteem, sense of identity and sense of self-worth. So with your initiative, are you looking to go into schools to reach out to these young people's community centres? What exactly are you doing? Wherever we're wanted. Schools is where we're starting, but wherever there is a need, wherever there is a call, is where we will be. Family is something that is also so very important and sadly we see the, 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 the rates of divorce and the, the families are aparted nowadays as well. But you're talking about the choir and the choir is very much like a family. So I can just understand and probably assume you bringing in these young people and you're making them maybe feel part of some sort of family. Why is that important? I think, well, we know that family is important because it, it does bring about a sense of identity a sense of belonging. And I think that, I feel that the incidence of mental health issues has risen. And so we want to give people a, a place, a space where they can feel belonging, where they can feel uh, safety, where they can feel wanted. Uh, and that's what healthy families do. And that's what we hope the Kingdom Choir does as well. I love the fact that you're bringing in people who are asking the questions, they're hearing about your music, and then they're asking and talking about difficulties in their own lives. And then you're also having the opportunity of praying with them as well, which is so very, very important. So for any of our viewers who are watching us today, maybe they're going through a difficult time in their own personal lives. Maybe they're going through a crossroad. They don't quite know which way or which direction to take. What can we tell our viewers today? I would say give Jesus a chance. Um, we're nearing ascension. And it's the time when Jesus rose to heaven. Uh, but he, he, he died for a reason. And um, I just feel so pri privileged and honoured to feel that Jesus suffered. His body was broken for me, for my broken life. And I would say to anybody who's wondering, just give Jesus a chance. That's what I would say. How can you describe that feeling of having Jesus Christ in your life? Because for any of our viewers, and we constantly have new viewers who maybe have never watched Christian TV or they're hearing about Jesus Christ, maybe for the very first time, how could we explain that feeling or that relationship? Because it is, is about a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not just yeah. a religion, it's that relationship, isn't it? Yeah, it is relationship. So it's not about, be, becoming Christian is not about becoming a saint immediately. It's not about your problems going away, but it is about building relationship. And it is about the hope that you have because of that relationship. It brings assurance, it brings stability, and it brings comfort. Amen. I want to say Karen Gibson, MBE, award-winning choir conductor and Kingdom Choir. Thank you so much for joining us on Revelation TV and God bless you, Karen. Thank you. God bless you, Cyrus. Thank you for having me. Thank you.